All right guys, so I just got the SR20 back into the 180SX. I had a few folks wanting to know a little bit more about my turbo setup. So let's get into it a little bit. This is a GTX 2871R turbo that's actually been shoehorned into a stock frame setup. Uh, so it can fit stock location, still use the OEM bits on it. And then uh, back here, it's a surprisingly great little piece that I bought for not a whole lot of money. It's a Circuit Sports cast stainless steel um, turbo elbow. What's nice about this is that it doesn't have a welded pipe up here, so there's no like restriction. If you notice some of the cheaper, cheaper brands out there, you'll look inside of it and it has the welded piece in there and they don't really do a good job of fitting it into the flange itself. This is all one piece. And then down here it's welded uh, for the bottom, but if you look inside, I mean, there's no there's no seam or anything for obstructions of flow. So I really, really dig this piece. And I was able to wrap it in DEI, uh, titanium infused heat wrap. So I, I recommend doing that with this because you don't have to worry about moisture buildup underneath here because it's stainless steel. So it's not gonna rot away. Um, this is just an OEM new O2 sensor. Um, and yeah, let me see what else we got. So this guy, this is actually an extrude honed um, stock turbo manifold that has provisions for a wastegate. This is also Cerakoted, just like this turbine housing. I had this Cerakoted, I removed everything, had them Cerakote this and Cerakote this. And then, like I said before, it was extrude honed. So it takes off a lot of the large rough casting marks on the inside. And then we put the provisions for this MVS wastegate on here. And as you can see, if you look inside, you can see that there's, there's the opening for it to exhaust the gases. So that's kind of cool. And it's, it's a nice form factor. And you'll see in my other video that I posted before showing the turbo actually in the car, I had to actually take it off because I was worried. I, I was second guessing myself and I was like, man, you know, I need to make sure that this restrictor is the right size. I just want to double check. And I was, you know, here I am, it's like two in the morning right now. <laughs> and uh, I got out of bed and I ran up here because I'm like, damn, you know, it, did I get the right restrictor? No, I don't. I don't have the right restrictor. This is actually a three mil. This would have been bad. I would have blown the seals out in this turbo because even though it's a GTX, um, since it's a Gen 1, it does not have the um, it doesn't have the actual uh, internal restrictor built into it. So I actually ordered a DiffTech one millimeter restrictor or forty thousandths um, restrictor for that. That's actually really good for these Garretts. Um, in case you're wondering, it's a dash three and for these lines right here, these are the ISR lines. It's actually a dash three, and then it's a 7 16 um, 24 for the bottom part right here. Um, anyway, so there's a PTP turbo blanket that fits this specific frame right here, so it fits nice and snug on there without a lot of excess all built up around it. And it's just a universal dump tube that I have. It's just stainless steel, nothing fancy, just hooks up to this. Like I said, you can look at my other video to see how it actually fits up inside the car. But uh, yeah, so uh, restrictor, man, can't believe I did that. So silly, you know, even with all the experience that I have over the years, um, it's the simple things that get you sometimes. You're like, you just forget about it and you wake up in the dead of night and go, oh crap. So yeah, um, I don't know why I was thinking for whatever reason, this, this banjo bolt down here for the oil feed was restricted and it's not pulled it apart and it's just as big as the port inside of here. And then this isn't restricted at all. So the actual fitting itself isn't. So I was like, oh man, what a bummer. So anyway, I got to take it apart, show you guys what the setup was. A um, few folks were like asking questions. Oh, why didn't you just run an S15 um, T28? Look, I've ran an S15 T28 for a long time. It's an excellent turbo, very streetable. It's just wonderful all around. I love it. But um, I, I'm looking for a little bit more top end in this car. I have a Q45 rear diff in this thing with 3.69 gears. I just like the top speed. I'm not a I'm not a guy that digs, you know, 4,000 RPMs at 80 miles an hour on the highway. Um, you know, I like to have RPM management, and this turbo should give me what I'm looking for as well. Um, you know, it's it, I will I will say this. You know, um, it is a little bit larger frame turbo, obviously, so I'm going to have a little bit of that uh, laggy difference over a T28. A T28 is a spool monster. That thing will just spool up really really quick. Uh, it'll feel very responsive. This thing, I know, I haven't ran this yet, but I know just off of just numbers and experience that this is going to have probably a couple hundred RPM difference in lag. But what I like is, is this is going to be able to hold it all the way past uh, redline. 
so where the T28 is going to fall fall off a little bit after about 5,000 or 5,500 RPM. So that's why I kind of chose this turbo. So anyway, uh, yeah, so that's the setup, guys. See you next time.